All right, so we are going to add a bit more of edge damage here with some hero painting. And for that, we need to go to our mask. So here we have the mask. We can look through it by pressing two on the keyboard. So that's our actual mask here. So we can disable here the bake point for now. So now it's live again. And we need to make a bit of space here. Whoop, wrong one. And we want to have here autosave kicking in. Yes, we want that. So we want to have another merge node. Yes, and a new paint node, same as before, with an alpha of zero, and hook it up. Let's go back, and it looks still the same. So now here comes a super powerful feature of Mario, which makes it super unique in that way, and that's the projection painting. The projection painting is actually a very strong um, thing of Mario. And that's this one here. You can simply drag and drop an image from the image manager into your viewport, to projection painting it. And we have here a few little things we need to know about that. So here we have a few modes. No stencil is great for when you're projecting actual textures like some wood structures or concrete and decals and stuff like that. But for mask, I highly recommend to use luminance or inverted luminance. And that means luminance wherever <clears throat> sorry wherever the texture is white it will paint in these areas the color you have selected here on the side wherever here is it in invert luminance wherever it's not luminance so wherever it's black it will paint in that area the color you have here on the right side but we want to go for luminance here and now let's check the area here and we can add some new breakups. So now you can see we are projection painting here the patch we have it we have here in the texture. And bake it down. And here we have it. Yeah, maybe we need to go a bit closer to not uh, have here this pixelated look. And the cool thing is you can extract such mask from such photos and you have instantly the photorealistic breakups because it's captured from the reality. And that that helps super super nice to to bring photorealistic details into your into your work. So here add more of that. Don't like that one here. Maybe go a bit closer. Why is it so pixelated? Yeah, from that distance, it's it's fine. It's super fine. So we can also go for a bigger patch here. Let's say here it's a bit more damage, so we can look for for a patch which we like. Or let's scale this one a bit up here, and say hey, here it's super damaged. Yeah, why not? I mean, this is physically accurate because, <laughs> yeah, it's captured from from the reality, so you don't have to worry about it. Does that make sense, how it's distributed here, all the little things? So it just looks photoreal. Yeah, as I say it 200 times now, it's from the reality. You just have to bit um, think around where you are adding this kind of details. Maybe we can get this scratch here, which is actually very nice. Let's try it out. Yes, that doesn't look too bad at the moment. Very nice. Very nice. So this adds now a bit of story to our robot here. And you can spend 
super long time on adding these details. So if we have painted here on an area which we don't want, we can simply switch the color and use the same patch here to decrease it here in that, that area. So as I said, in Luminance it will paint in the white areas the color you have here on the right side. Yeah. Let's make it a bit damaged here. Here it's super helpful to also see um, some references how it's damaged. And here again you can spend even more time on that on your end. But I think I will continue now for the sake of the tutorial to not end up with super long super long video where I just painting here. Alright, let's call it done. So we need to rebake here. So if we switch it back on, you can see all the stuff we have painted here is gone. So we need to bake it again. But that's anyway a process which is very quick on that end. So here we are back on track. Nice. So as you can see here, all the bake points are broken now because, yeah, as I said, uh, we altered here the lower stream, but it's not that much of a problem right now. We can bake them later, but I still want to continue here a bit, so to add this little leaks here in our texture. So we can watch here through the diffuse color. So now we have here the diffuse color and we can turn down or turn off here the bake point and we can jump here into our yellow yellow material. So here make a bit of space, add a new merge node, add a color node. as I like to do it, make it red, so we can better see what we are doing. Just a moment. Paint node. Here an alpha of 1, because we want to paint the mask by ourselves. And here I have a very nice leak texture, which you can find in the project files as well. So now let's go here and as we can see here it's some liquid which has collected here in the corner and then it runs down and we want to replicate this as well here. Let's try that. Here again in luminance mode so it's painting only here in the white spots. So that it makes sense actually. Here we don't want to have it. Uh, we don't need it there. Yeah, we can paint it out with just a brush. Now it's gone. Bake it. And we can add now this hero details, which brings even more life to our asset. Yeah, switch the color. And as always, you can spend as long as you want here on adding such details to your model. Oh, no, no, I don't want to display what is it? Now I'm displaying the normals. Oh. What was it? N normal? No, oh, how can I disable that? I never I never used that. Go away. Yeah, now it's now it's gone. What was it? M? N? Let's figure it out together. V will display it, okay. And M will hide it. Alright, so I learned something as well together with you. Pretty nice. 
So here I want to have such leaks as well. Let's add it. Let's go crazy here. Okay, not that crazy. Decrease it here so that it makes, makes sense. But look at this. And call it a day. Very nice. So we need to have a color which makes a bit more sense in terms of right here. So let's go for something more on the brownish as well. But here we can go a bit more saturated. Maybe something like that. I really like that. So we can make these parts a bit more rough or glossier, that's up to you, depends on the look you want to achieve. So we can go for a fully white here. We don't need that much of resolution for that. Hook it up. We can look through that node here by pressing 2 on the keyboard. And we need the mask which we have painted here on top. And we don't want to have it that pure white and I want to have a bit of the roughness which is going on underneath mixed in. Something like that. So we can go back and rebake this one here. And turn it back on. And we need to rebake here this bake points as well, but in this case that goes super fast, so that's not a problem. So that's a bit up to you how you want to work. Do you want to add these hero details right at the beginning so you don't have to rebake all that stuff? Or do you want to block out all the stuff and as soon as you have a better feeling of the whole asset, you are start painting some more life to it and add some hero details, that's really up to you and I think it's also depending a bit on the asset. If it's just a small asset with just a few textures or UDIMs, it's not a problem to rebake the stuff. As you can see, it's it's done in no time. If you have a bit of bigger project, then maybe it makes sense to work on a specific material until it's almost done to not have uh, to jump between all the different areas all the time. So as you can see here, it's pretty nice breaking up the roughness and we have some hero details. It's actually pretty cool. I really like it. Turns out very nice. And yeah, that's how you can work with projection painting. And we see us in the next video.